Hello, welcome back to my next video, another video. Uh, I'm going to walk you through, uh, I'm going to demonstrate and teach you how to test a GPS sensor, which is known as throttle position sensor. All right? I'm working on a Toyota Vios, year 2008. It's a 1.3 liter engine. And this car belongs to Despark. As you can see, we have a, a license plate, Despark. Okay, so right now, I'm gonna show you where the TPS sensor is located. The TPS sensor is right here. This is where the TPS sensor is. It's a three wire TPS. Let me unplug. And can you see, it's a, it's a three pin TPS. It has three wires. Clearly, three wires. Okay, and TPS is always opposite the throttle linkage, which is over here. This is a throttle linkage, which is right opposite. Okay. So what I'm going to do, the first step is I'm going to teach you how to verify or how to determine which which one is signal, which wire is ground, and followed by uh, power. All right. Most TPS needs 5 volt from the ECU. They don't need 12 volt, which is which is not true. And uh, and to do that, I need to back probe, all right? So I need my pin, I need my pin. My pin is over here, it looks something like this. This is a pin. I'm gonna back probe the first one, which is right on top, which is right on top. I'm gonna go all the way in, and I'm gonna use a multimeter, or known as a digital multimeter, it looks something like this. Uh, select to voltage, which is DC, and the black, the black leads, all right, this is the black lead, goes to ground, direct to the battery, all right. And this red, red lead, you touch the first, the first wire of the TPS, which is right on top, and make sure the key is switched on, ignition key is on, don't start the engine. And let's go back to the multi multimeter, you have 0.6, and the moment I, I go wide open throttle, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, means this is a signal wire back to the ECU, all right? Because the ECU needs signal, okay? So let's go to the next one. Okay, in order to determine, uh, to know that this is a true signal, or it could be ground, it could be uh, a, a 5 volt reference, I'm, I'm going to unplug, unplug the connector, TPS connector, I'm going to unplug. If I unplug, if I unplug, for example, and I see a change from the multimeter screen, means it's not ground, right? Ground should be 0 0.02. Uh, constant voltage should be remain the same, either 5 or 12. So the moment I unplug, is, there's a change, means it's a signal wire. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is uh, over here. Have to get this right because at times when you do it wrongly, uh, you don't get any kind of voltage because you haven't gone all the way in. Uh, okay, right now I'm getting 0 0.01, which is uh, yeah, 0 0.01, means it's ground. The moment I unplug and I will notice Unplugged is still the same, 0.01. And let's go to the next one, the third one. 0.01 means is uh, actually ground. Eh? It's definitely ground. And now I'm getting the third third wire, which is the third uh, pin. I'm getting uh, five volt, which is a reference from the ECU, as you can see. Eh? It's five volt, 5.02. The moment I unplug, is still the same. There's no change, it's unplugged. It's still 5 volt. There's no change. So, uh, trying to understand the TPS, knowing uh, the circuit design, you know this is a 3 wire TPS sensor. Okay, I'm going to show you how to test, uh, do a proper test on a TPS. Uh, I'm going to go to the signal wire, which is right on top. 
I'm so sorry about my voice because it's raining heavy over here. Uh, they're having some uh, interruption, right? So I'm gonna go right on top, which I'm gonna back road and looking at the multi multimeter, which I'm getting 0.6 over here, 0.6 watt, and uh, to see a good TPS, it works well. I need to go all the way up, wide open throttle. As you can see here, it's a linkage. I'm getting about 3.8, and you should see a smooth transition, a smooth change. Uh, the moment I close the throttle, it's 0.6. And another step is, another method, I can use uh, uh, a tool, which I'm using a T, all right? I can gently tap on the TPS sensor. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna wide open throttle all the way up, and I'm gonna gently tap on the TPS uh, on the TPS sensor, which is here. The moment I do that, you have to make sure there's no change in voltage. There's no change at all. We're saying 3.9, 3.89. That's uh, that's that's not much. All right. So uh, this is a good TPS. Okay. Okay. This is a good TPS. Okay, to use, uh, to use an oscilloscope, uh, testing a TPS sensor, I'm going to go to oscilloscope now. Using an oscilloscope, uh, you select throttle while potentiometer. What is potentiometer? TPS is known as a variable resistor, is known as a potentiometer. It's the same, all right, because it, it, it changes as you sweep the throttle. So I'm going to double click. And you have like a graph here, all right. You have uh, uh, one which is voltage over here. This is voltage. Over here is uh, in millisecond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, over here, which is X. I'm going to select and choose... Uh, 10, probably 10 seconds, and I'm going to go to Y, which is voltage. I'm going to choose about, it's up to you, you can choose 20, you can choose 10, because TPS uh, basically, uh, it needs uh, voltage from the ECU, which is reference, 5 volt. So, if I select uh, 20, which is good enough, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back to the sensor, I have a uh, back probe, the right on top, the top uh, wire of the TPS connector, and I'm going to use the multi. Sorry, I'm going to use oscilloscope leads. This is what I have. These two leads. You can watch on my previous video. I did mention that you know it's up to you. Uh, which way you want to go around you can either go positive or negative because color doesn't matter but if you do it wrongly the waveform goes upside down it goes the other way around so what you need to do you have to turn it around okay All right so I'm gonna I have two of this two of the uh, alligator clips uh, I'm just going to connect it to the oscilloscope leads, which is these two of this. And uh, one goes to ground, the other one goes to the signal wire. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to connect this to uh, battery, uh, which is a negative terminal, which is over here. One here. And one should go here, which I've already back broke, the first, uh, first wire over here. Okay, let's go back to the screen, oscilloscope screen. You can see there is a voltage, all right? You know what? I've selected the wrong uh, voltage. Uh, we should be going back to Y again. We should be 10. 10 would be the best. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wide open throttle. The moment I do that, it should go up. Alright, the moment I close throttle, it should go down. 
all right? So each time when you snap the throttle, it should have a smooth change. You shouldn't have any glitch in between, all right? So let me try. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wide open throttle all the way up. Down. Going up. Going down. You want to get a better perspective, a better picture. I can go back to Y and uh, you can always uh, play with this thing, Y here, voltage. I can go back to 5 volt. Uh, that, this would be ideal. So I'm going to do the same thing. Full throttle. And I'm going to release the throttle. It's going down. Okay, I'm going to pause this a bit for a while. I'm going to stop. Can you see here? You have like a, I would say like a dip over here. This is not a TPS problem. Over here is my fault actually. But what I'm trying to say is I've, I've opened all the way up. I've closed. And in between there was a glitch. So I need to do that again. I'm going to measure. All the way up. Looking at the screen, it's a good TPS. The moment I release the throttle, it's going down. Another step is I can open, wide open throttle and tap on the TPS gently to see any glitch. I'm going to do that now. Wide open throttle. I am tapping on the TPS sensor. I am gently tapping on the TPS sensor to look for any glitch. There is no glitch or whatsoever. It's a good sign. If you have dropouts, means you need to replace your TPS sensor. Alright, so let's go back. Since I've done the oscilloscope, let's go back to the multimeter. Alright, I've just showed you how to use a multimeter. And I've, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm using a multimeter. I'm actually using, a, uh, using an oscilloscope. I'm using a scan tool, which is, we have a Bosch, as what I mentioned in my previous video. It's known as a KTS340. Um, this is one of the, I would say, one of the best equipment around the Bosch. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select TPS. Alright. You can see, absolute throttle position. Absolute throttle position. I'm going to continue. I'm reading about 12.2. This is not voltage, this is percentage. Eh? You must understand on certain cars it measures percentage. You can, on some scan tools, yes, you can actually measure voltage. But looking at percentage, if it's the TPS is uh, the throttle valve, sorry, eh? the throttle valve is closed, you get about 12.2. If you wide open throttle, you wide open throttle you should get about 77.6%. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use, I'm going to teach you how to diagnose the wiring, all right? In case, if for, for an example, if you have a problem with your TPS sensor, or maybe your wiring, so how are you going to further diagnose uh, the vehicle, all right? Okay, my next test is I'm going to teach you how to check the wiring. We call it has an integrity test, meaning that uh, it's kind of a cool test. I'm going to show you how to check if you have an open circuit eh, in your signal wire. I'm going to use a resistor. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass. It's called a bypass test. This takes about 5 minutes or less than 3 minutes. Most people would take 45 minutes to 2 hours to check, uh, basically to check the wiring, okay? So I'm going to do this, what I'm going to use is, I'm right now I'm using a 
5,000 ohm resistor, uh, which we convert to kilo ohm. It's about 5 kilo ohm. So how do I verify this is 5,000? I'm going to show you from a multi multimeter. I'm selecting to kilo ohm, and I'm going to check this resistor. What is the value of the resistor? What I'm getting? I'm getting about... 0.6.5 alright 0.6.5 that is close to about 4600 ohms alright 4600 ohms eh? so what I'm going to do is uh, when I go back to the connector I'm going to do a bypass connect the scan tool and look at scan data to see there is a change of uh, voltage okay let's go back to the scan tool Okay, going back, looking at the scan tool, you have about 12 point, you have about 12.2 percent over here, 12.2 percent, and I'm going to disconnect the connector to do a bypass test over here. I'm doing a bypass test. So, what I've explained previously, I've mentioned that. This is a signal over here. This first, uh, this first pin here is signal. And the second one is ground. The third one is uh, 5 volt reference. If I'm going to use this resistor over here, this resistor which is 5000 ohm, I'm going to do a bypass between the signal and, sorry, yeah, between the signal here and 5 volt. The moment I do this, if I see a change in a scan tool, means your signal wire is good. There's no problem, there's no open circuit, there's no short to ground. If I do a bypass and notice there's no change, means you have an open circuit or you might have a short to ground in your signal wire. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now since I've unplugged, let's look at the scan tool. It's 0.4. 0.4 doesn't say that your voiding is good. You might have a short to ground. It might show the same value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bypass. Okay, let's go back to the connector. One goes here. The first, the last, last pin over here. You can see. One goes here. The other one goes here. Okay. I've done the bypass and which is 5 volt reference and signal and looking at the scan data is 99.6 percent right means your signal is perfectly fine you have no problem that simple of a test it takes you about two minutes to solve the problem all right this is how we check the wiring system. Okay, using the difference between oscilloscope, multimeter and scan tool, uh, I would say if you use a, an oscilloscope, it's, uh, it's the best method to test the sensor. Uh, of course, scan tool is, is one of the possible things that you can use. But uh, it depends because scan tool would give you a 50% uh, answer and the rest of it goes back to you. Uh, you have to do further diagnostic. So uh, it's up to you which one you want to use. So I would say, uh, I would say like a layman, uh, probably a person who, who can't afford to buy a, a scan tool or probably can't afford to buy an oscilloscope, they would prefer to use a multimeter. Yes, that's good enough. A multimeter you can you can trust about 90 percent uh, that's what you can get from it you know so uh, that's it for my video for today and um, I would make more videos in future and I'm planning to uh, go for more sensors and uh, that's about it for today thank you Can you feel this is how I wanna be?